Now please note that the kings were not having administration only along the religious lines. Hindu kings had Muslim assistants. Muslim kings had Hindu collaborators. And it is through this that the administration in the medieval times was going on. In Akbar's court, we see Nau Ratna or nine jewels. And of these nine jewels, two of them are Hindus. One is a very popular one known as Birbal. The other is slightly less known, Raja Todarmal. But Raja Todarmal was one of the most important part of Akbar's court. Why? Because Raja Todarmal was doing the same thing in Akbar's court what today in Manmohan Singh's government P. Chidambaram is doing. So Todarmal had total control on the revenue on which Akbar's rule was dependent. Shivaji was a renowned king whose main concern was that the taxation on the poor peasantry should be reduced. Shivaji's administrations had many top officials who were Muslims. His confidential secretary was Maulana Haider Ali. His spy come bodyguard was rustam -e jaman In his canon division, we had Siddhi Sambal and Ibrahim Gardi. So this type of mixed administration which Shivaji had tells us that he had no anti-Muslim sentiments. Same Shivaji, in his Raigad fort, he got a temple built temple of Lord Jagdishwar for himself and he also got a mosque made for the Muslim people in his administration and in his state who were living under his tutelage. Now same way if we see that this whole perception which has brought in that kings were the representative of their religion is totally wrong. Kings were for power and this power was the main motor which was driving them to undertake battles and to send their armies into different areas. All the aspects of our culture, literature, music, architecture and so many things, even our dressing pattern, all this developed because of the interaction of Hindus and Muslims. That's why a Muslim king, Prince Muhammad Darashiko, in his book Mazma ul Baharin, writes that India is a great ocean and this great ocean this great ocean has come to be formed because of union of two seas these two seas are one is hinduism another is islam and these reflections we can find in most of the aspects of our life you may be knowing that today we are wearing pant shirt pajama kurta or salwar kameej but in ancient times in india the people were wearing sari and dhoti and these are the clothes which are also seen when you are seeing the serials like Ramayana and Mahabharat. Why pant shirt, salwar kameej, pajama kurta was not there? Because at that time the art of weaving was very much developed in India but the art of stitching was brought here by the Arab traders from Saudi Arabia. Similarly, jalebi and biryani these are two things which were brought by the people coming from Iran. Now while this interaction I can recount, I can, I will like to point out that the highest synthesis of Hindu and Muslim interaction took place in the field of religious traditions. And these two traditions on one hand are Bhakti tradition and the other hand there is a Sufi tradition. Sufi saints and Bhakti saints they were primarily harping on the moral values of religion and they used these values for uniting humanity. So we see while on one side there are saints of Sufi and Bhakti tradition who unite the people around moral values. On the other hand, there are, there are kings and there are politicians who use religious identity for dividing, for partitioning the people. So how did Islam spread in India? Now the answer to this question is given by none other than Swami Vivekananda. Swami Vivekananda in his collected works, volume 8, 
page 330 writes that it is wrong to say that Islam spread on the strength of the sword. He says it is wrong to say that Islam spread on the strength of the sword. The Shudras, the untouchables, embraced Islam to escape the tyranny of landlord Brahmin. It is very logical that Shudras who were not permitted to enter the Hindu temples, they were going to the shrines of Sufi saints because in Sufi saint shrine there is entry for everybody and it is under the humanistic aspects of their teachings that a large number of people embraced Islam. Force cannot make the religion spread. It is a message of love which makes the religion spread from one part of the country to another part of the country, from one country to another country. Similarly, I must say that Islam also spread because of the interaction of Hindus and Muslims. And these examples we see in the Mayus of Rajasthan, in the Nawayats of Kerala, because Islam has also many sects. Rather, all religion has may have many sects. So the re Islamic religious sects, which developed because of the interaction, they retained lot of the traditions from Hindu religion. And these traditions are still perceptible, still observable amongst the Muslims of these particular sections in the country. While talking about conversions, one has also to talk of the other conversions in the name of which today massive communal violence is going on. And that pertains to the anti-Christian violence which has been taking place from 1997 and which has become extremely intensified currently in Orissa, Karnataka and different parts of the country. The argument given is that Christian missionaries are converting the gullible Adivasis and Dalits by force, fraud and allurement. Now in the same direction, one Dara Singh belonging to Bajrangal incited many of the Adivasi people to kill Pastor Graham Steverstains who had come from Australia and who was working for eradication of leprosy amongst Adivasis in this area. His death along with his two innocent children that created a atmosphere in which a inquiry commission was appointed by BJP led NDA government at the center. That commission was called Vadhva Commission. Vadhva Commission, after three months' work, came to the conclusion which is very significant. Its first conclusion was that Pastor Staines was not involved in any work of conversion. The second conclusion was that in the area Manoharpur, Kyonjar, Orissa, where the pastor was working, in that area the percentage of Christians did not go up during the period of his working in that area. The third point if we see, we know that the Christian missionaries are not in India from last few decades. They are here in India from last many centuries. As a matter of fact, the first church in India was established in year AD 52 by St. Thomas on Malabar coast. Since that time, Christian missionaries have been there, they have been coming and people have been taking to Christianity and in very very small number. Now it is very important for us to note that the only percentage of Christians which has become so over a period of 1950 years is 2.30. So the basic argument that they are doing this by allurement or force etc etc has no meaning what if we overall look at this whole point of conversion we see that in cities the christian missionaries who are working and their institutions they are not attacked but their work in the villages their work in the forest areas their work in the tribal area that is the work which is criticized which is condemned and which is attacked there has to be a different political reason for this sort of a propagation which is totally false. We will come to this later to understand that basically the people who are spreading this propaganda 
they are against the education facilities for adivasis that's why they do not want to see the christian missionaries working in these remote places where adivasis are in the large number